Hi friends, welcome to our 40 day prayer challenge. I am so thrilled that you are going to join me on this journey. If we are just meeting, I am Kelly Thorne Gore. I'm a life and a business coach, and I'm really just passionate about helping you create a life you love. And I believe that our relationship with God is so foundational to that. And so I am so excited to start this prayer challenge. So if you're joining me live or you're watching the recording of this, I would love to know where are you tuning in from today? Where are you from? Where are you watching? We have hundreds of people who have said they are in and they want to join us on this journey. So I am so excited to spend these next 40 days with you. And I just believe God is gonna do the most incredible things. So if you did not know, we have just entered the second half of 2020. Now, I don't know about you, but the first half of 2020 had a lot of unexpected things, I think for most of us. Some things that maybe caught us off guard. <clears throat> Some things that were just completely out of the blue, things that we would have never dreamed could have happened. And perhaps you are feeling a bit of just overwhelm and exhaustion and worry and fear. And so I just wanna invite you into this space that is gonna be safe for you to be you. And it's gonna be a space that is safe for us to go to God and to seek him. And so I just kind of threw this together at the last minute. So I've been going through Draw the Circle. In fact, this is my 20th time through the book. So I started it on June 30th. And yesterday, as I was praying and walking, I just had this sense that somebody else is supposed to join me on this journey. And so I decided to just throw it out there and say, hey, I'm going to do this starting tomorrow. I didn't even really give you time to get the book if it's new to you, but I just felt like somebody needed hope right now. And so if that's you, I just want to take a moment to celebrate how much God loves you that he would take this girl in Kentucky going through this journey by herself and on my prayer walk yesterday, just interrupt any plan I had for this and say more people are supposed to come along. And so if that's you and you need hope and you knew this was for you, I just want to encourage you to dig in deep because I believe God has something incredible in store for you over these next 40 days. So I'm going to share a bunch of resources with you over our time together. I love this devotional. Love it. You want to get it. We're going to go through it together. But I have some other things because prayer is something that is something I'm super passionate about. It's something I've been digging into because I believe it's just our opportunity to connect with our creator, to connect with the God of the universe who created you with a plan and a purpose. And I believe that a lot of us try to go through this life on our own. We try to do all this stuff on our own and we can't do it. And so then we get stressed and we get overwhelmed and we get fearful, all the things. And it's simply because we haven't taken the time to connect with the one who created us. And so my prayer out of these 40 days is that God would meet you in the most incredible way and that you would have the most amazing encounter with God. So one of the resources I want to share with you, and I put all these links in the description with this post, so you'll find them there, is the book Fervent. It's by Priscilla Schreier. I would highly recommend that you watch the movie War Room at least once during this 40-day journey. Maybe you need to watch it several times. Um, I just was reminded I need to go dig mine out so I can watch it as well. All right, so I want to share with you something from this book. So War Room, this book goes along with the movie. And there's something in this book, and of course I was showing you and I lost my place. Um... 
that I want to share with you because I think some of you are in the midst of some mega warfare right now. Like you feel like everything is coming against you. And so this is going to offer you some hope. So it's from Fervent, page two, if you have the book. And she said, this is war. The fight of your life. A very real enemy has been strategizing and scheming against you and maybe against your family, assaulting you, coming after your emotions, your mind, your man, your child, your future. In fact, he's doing it right this second, right where you're sitting, right where you are. But I say, His reign stops here. It stops now. He might be coming, but he won't have victory anymore because it all starts failing when we start praying. And so hundreds of women around the world are going to come together and start praying. And I believe we are going to watch God do more than we could ask or imagine. And so if you've been feeling like the enemy is coming after you, coming after your emotions, your thoughts, your mind, if you feel like the enemy has been coming coming after your home and your marriage and your children, I want you to declare that today he will have no more reign in your life. Because we know who gets the final say. We know that God gets the victory. And so we're going to stop being controlled by the enemy who is seeking to destroy us. He's come, Jesus tells us, to kill, steal, and destroy. And so let's get him to stop right now. Because we are going to start praying as women of God. All right, so that's number one I want to share with you. All right, number two I want to share with you is from today's portion of Draw the Circle. So I'm just going to highlight a couple things. I know some of you don't even have your book yet, and that's totally fine. Like, you're going to just be able to watch these videos and jump right in with us. Okay, so one of the things that it talks about in this devotional is that when we pray regularly, so we got to do this regularly, and quite honestly, Um, We had a big discussion in my family about this just recently. We were talking about like when we say grace at the table, um, my husband really likes for the kids not to eat and to have a posture of prayer. And I was thinking about this and I was thinking about how like that's not necessarily what I personally believe. I respect my husband for sure. But we had this great dialogue and I said, I feel like we're always in a posture of prayer. I'm talking to God all day long. And so if the kids want to eat while they're praying, does it really matter? And so then we just talked about, okay, well, proper manners. When we go to other people's houses, we want to have proper manners. But the reality is we got to be talking to God all day long. It's this constant connection and communion with him. And so it's not just getting in our prayer closet. It's not just praying when we have meals. It is this daily dialogue with God. And I believe he wants that for us. Okay, so back to the devotional. So it says, when you pray to God regularly, irregular things happen on a regular basis. Do you need God to show up in your life on a regular basis? You never know when or where or how God will invade the routine of your life, but you can live in holy anticipation. Do you need some holy anticipation today? Knowing that God is orchestrating supernatural. God is orchestrating things on your behalf. If you've been around our community for a while, you know, I often say, because I know from my story, that God is working out the itty bitty details of our life. And he can be so trusted because he loves us. He loves us unconditionally as his daughters, as his sons. And he wants us 
to have access to all of heaven's resources. He doesn't want us to be fearful. He doesn't want us to live in worry and stress. He wants us to have peace that can come only from spending time with him. Peace that truly does surpass all understanding. Okay, then in the book it talks about if you establish a prayer routine, that's what we're going to do in this, your life will be anything but routine. You will go to places and do things and meet people you have no business going to or doing or meeting. You don't need to seek opportunity. All you have to do is seek God. And if you seek God, opportunity will seek you. So I know some of you are coming into this and you have a lot of needs right now. Maybe you're not sure how you're going to pay your bills this month. Maybe you're struggling with your health or struggling with a decision that your child made or you have a prodigal child that you're praying for. I just want to encourage you that as we seek God, it's one degree of separation. You may not be able to get to that child right now. You may not know how you're going to cover your bills this month, but God does. God sees you and he loves you and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And it is one degree of separation. And so you may not be able to do it, but our God can. And so when we pray, God can do far more than we can do when we are seeking the opportunity. And so let's choose to seek him. Okay, so you're going to want to dive into that because there's so many other amazing nuggets. So I want to talk about, okay, well, what are we going to pray for? And so I've created a prayer circle for you. So this is kind of the foundation of the book is he uses a prayer circle. And so if you go to my website, kellythorngore.com slash prayer, you are going to get access to this prayer circle. And so it's super simple, but it's going to be our mark. And so you are going to write in the circle what you are specifically praying for. But let's talk about this for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to share one more resource with you. The Circle Maker. So this was the original book before Draw the Circle. So this kind of gives the foundation, but it doesn't have the 40-day prayer journey. So I want to read you a couple passages. And while I'm reading this, I want you to think about what are you going to specifically pray for over these next 40 days? Okay, so it says, bold prayers honor God. Okay, let that sink in. Bold prayers honor God. And God honors bold prayers. God isn't offended by your biggest dreams or your boldest prayers. He is offended by anything less. Okay, listen to this carefully. If your prayers aren't impossible for you, they are insulting to God. If your prayers aren't impossible for you, they're insulting to God. So why? Because they don't require divine intervention. If you can do it on your own, why pray? I remember the first time I read that, and maybe it's how you're feeling right now. I was almost kind of offended. I was like, what? But I think we have stopped praying big, bold prayers. I don't know if it's out of fear. I don't know if it's because we don't feel worthy. I don't know if it's, we just don't think it's gonna happen. But instead we start praying for these little things that we have control over, that we can do. And I'm not saying don't talk to God about all this stuff because I talk to God about all this stuff. But I'm talking about those things that you are fervently praying for. Are they things that are impossible for you? Because they're possible for God. 
Okay, a little bit later, he says, I've already, oh, hold on, wait a second. There's something else I want to tell you. Okay, wait, I'm going back to that section for a minute. So he says, there is nothing God loves more than keeping promises, answering prayers, performing miracles, and fulfilling dreams. That is who he is. That is what he does. And the bigger circle we draw, the better. Because God gets the glory. That is the point of this is that we want God to get the glory for what he is going to do in our lives or in our businesses over the next 40 days. God is going to get the glory. And so the only way that happens is if something impossible happens, something that is not possible with your own actions. Doesn't mean we shouldn't do the actions because we should. I believe that us praying big, big, bold prayers and doing exactly what God shows us to do is the key to unearthing these things that God has for us. Okay, the last thing I want to share with you. He said, I've already stated our primary problem. Most of us do not get what we want because either we don't know what we want. So we don't know what that big, bold prayer is, but there's a secondary problem. And I think this is where most of us land. Most of us don't get what we want because we quit circling. We quit praying. We give up too easy. We give up too soon. We quit praying right before the miracle happens. And so this is my challenge for this 40 days is really the point of this 40 days is to get us in a habit and in a rhythm of praying consistently, of asking God for these big, bold things. And so as you are spending time with God, as you are seeking him for what you are to pray for, make sure it's something big. And by big, I mean something that's going to impact generations from now. Something big that is not only about your life and what you want, but it has a ripple impact into thousands of other lives. Big, bold prayers. So I would love to know, first of all, I want you to go download the prayer circle. So you can find it at kellythorngore.com slash prayer. It will also allow you to get these videos delivered to your inbox each day. So I want you to go get that. And then when you know what you are praying, I want you to reply to that email that you're going to get. It's going to just come to me personally. And I want to know what you're praying for because I am going to write it on a post-it note and I'm going to create a little dialogue collage thing so that I can be joining you in prayer for specifically what you are praying for. I believe that so you choose, that was a weird combination of words. If you choose, this 40 days can radically change your life. And I'm going to partner with you in prayer. And I don't know what God has in store, but I just have this feeling he is about to bless our socks off. All right. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. Go get that circle. You start praying about what you're going to pray about and then send me an email and let me know so I can join you in a prayer. All right. I'll see you tomorrow.